So gang, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Garabu Sitole, and I hope you like what you see. I hope you, hope you, I hope you like what you see. I hope you like what you're seeing and you decide to subscribe to the channel so that you become part of our family. If there's anyone who's watching and knows the amount of work we put in when we are recording, when we're making content, you would subscribe because it takes quite a lot of content, it takes quite a lot of efforts, a lot of editing, it takes making notes beforehand, it takes studying just to make sure that you guys are also fine, just to make sure that. We save your semester so that we save everyone's semesters. So it kind of hurts for you guys to just watch and not subscribe because honestly, it's free to subscribe. You could just take a second and click the subscribe button, right? So please make sure you've subscribed, right? Because you're definitely going to love it here. Okay, let's get into today's content. So in today, we are doing finance, savings, and investment. I'm just going to be giving you guys giving you guys a short background on this topic. So we have the difference between finance and money, and we say that finance is lending and borrowing, whereas money is what you use to pay for goods and services, right? I'm gonna repeat that, finance is lending and borrowing, whereas money is what you use to pay for goods and services. And then from now on, you're just going to be looking at finance, right, not money. So. Since we are talking about lending and borrowing, we need to know the markets, right? Where we can lend and borrow funds, right? And we have three such markets. We have the loan market, we have the bond market, and we have the stock market. So in the loan market, as the name suggests, this is where banks are going to exist, and this is where they issue out their loans. And then we have the bonds market. A bond is basically a promise, which we call a treasury bill. And this is a promise given to someone who borrows you money, right? That you're going to repay them at a specific date and give them a specific amount of money at, in that date, on that date, right? And then we have the last market, which is the stock market. Basically, the stock market is where you're buying your shares. It's, for example, the JSE, um, the New York um, Exchange. Securities exchange, those kind of markets. That's where you're buying your shares. That's where you're buying your certificates of ownership. So, yep, those are the markets that, that we have, right? And then in order to make a decision, right, when, when you want to make a decision on whether to lend or to borrow money, you need to look at the present value of that money right now, right? So you need to consider inflation. You need to consider the time value of money. And we have a formula that helps you do that, that helps you determine the present value of your future outflows or inflows, depending on whether you're borrowing or lending, right? And it's, the formula says present value, the present value of something, the present, the value of something now is equal to its future value over one plus R to the power of N, right? It can also be written with a negative n power. So it's fv times 1 plus r to the power of negative n. So just know this formula. Whenever you have outflows that you are going to get in the future, but you want to know what they are worth right now, what they, what they can buy right now, you need to calculate their present value, right? And then we look at what we call a net present value. So you've established your present value, but you want to know what the net of the present value is. What is any net? net salary net salary is a gross salary less deductions meaning that i need to subtract something right so i need to subtract a cost i need to subtract a deduction so meaning that the net present value is actually the present value less the initial cost of decision right and then we look at decisions now how do you decide whether to make a decision or not to make it sorry just a minute Okay, sorry about that. I was saying that whenever you want to make a decision, you ask yourself what the sign of your net present value is, right? So whenever the net present value is positive, you always take the decision. Whenever the net present value is negative, you don't take the decision, right? Okay, so another thing I need to bring to your attention is what we call net worth, right? So it's so net worth is basically what you borrowed to others less what was borrowed to you. Right. So it's assets less your liabilities in a way. Right. So when the net worth of a company is negative, meaning that you um borrowed, right? So meaning that you borrowed more than 
you you were borrowed more than you borrowed meaning that your liabilities are greater than your assets and it means that you you are insolvent you're not able to pay your liabilities using your assets so if your liabilities right if what you were borrowed is greater than what you borrowed if your liabilities are greater than your assets then it means that you are insolvent you're not able to pay your liabilities using your assets so yes so let us look at financial assets they are also called financial instruments we have stocks bonds securities and loans already defined their markets right and then we have two types of interest rates we have the nominal interest rate and the real interest rate anything that has nominal in its word it means that they have not adjusted for inflation right it means that it is the interest rate right now at current prices right whereas real interest rate is an interest rate that has been adjusted for inflation meaning that i take my nominal interest rate and i subtract my inflation so yes that's it right and then before i continue i want to look at demand and supply of loanable funds which is basically why you guys are probably here right so before i do that i want to establish something with you guys right i want to establish this with you guys so households let's look at households right the, the the main participant in an economy so where can their income go so their income which is denoted by y can go to savings and it can go to consumption and it can go to taxes, right? So this is where their income is distributed to savings, to consumption and to taxes. What are savings and where do, do these households take their savings? They take their savings to banks. The money that you have in your account right now, those are your savings, right? So and where are they? They are in your specific banks, in your commercial banks, right? So meaning that house and what are, okay, so we have what we call the the money creation process so what basically happens is that households give commercial banks their savings they save in commercial banks and commercial banks are going to use those accumulated savings from different households and they are going to lend businesses money right and what they do is that they are going to give you for example an interest rate of three percent on what you saved however they are going to charge banks a seven percent interest rate meaning that they are going to make a profit right because they charged you 3%, they gave you 3% interest, however, they charged banks 7% interest for borrowing the money. So that's what we call the money creation process. We're also going to look at the South African Reserve Bank, but that's for the next chapter. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about the money creation process. So households are going to give their savings to commercial banks, right? And commercial banks are going to give those savings to firms, in the form of loans, right? So what this tells you is that households are actually the suppliers of loanable funds, right? Whereas firms are the borrowers of loanable funds, right? Firms are going to take loans and they are going to invest. Households are going to take out their money and give it to banks. So, um, so these signs that I just, these letters that I put here are that savings are leakages because it's an outflow from the household to banks however this savings enter the economy in in in, in them in the form of investments right so you are going to understand this method this um thing of injections and leakages when we do the multiplier effect, right but don't worry about that i just wanted to also like mention that this concept you need to understand it that savings are a leakage they're an outflow whereas investment are in inflow right they are an injection into the economy so money is going to leave the economy in terms of savings but these very savings are going to enter as investment into the economy mm -hmm. let me summarize households are suppliers of loanable funds firms are the borrowers meaning they are the demand of loanable funds okay now let us look at right what could affect demand and what could cause a shift in the demand curve right so demand for loanable funds being our firms right being our firms so real interest rates cause a movement along the, the demand curve right and then expected profits actually cause a shift in the demand curve i'm going to show you guys the curves don't worry about that i just need to mention that real interest rates will cause a movement along because they act as a price in that market anything that is price related will cause a movement along anything other than price is going to cause a complete shift right and then same as supply, the real interest rate is going to cause movements along the supply curve, whereas anything other than the price, in this case, the real interest rate, they are going to cause 
shifts, a complete shift in the supply curve, right? So what could cause, what could potentially cause shifts? Number one is changes in your disposable income and it has a positive relationship. Whenever your disposable income increases, your savings are going to increase because you have more money to save, right? And then we look at the impact of default risk. Default risk is basically the risk that someone is not going to repay you back your money. So whenever there's a, there's a risk that someone's not going to pay you back your money, you're obviously going to lessen your savings. So they have a negative relationship. And then when we look at wealth, if you want a lot of today, do you think you're going to be thinking about saving or you're going to actually be thinking about investments? You're not going to think of savings, you're going to think of investments. And remember, savings are a leakage, investments are an injection. So wealth has a negative relationship with um, um, the, supp the, the supply of loanable funds. Whenever you're wealthy, so an in, in increase, when you see me, just give me a pen and give me paper. So an increase in wealth will cause a decrease in your savings, right? And then your expected future income, this also has a negative relationship with supply. Why do people save? Because the future is uncertain. When someone thinks that the future is going to be very dark, right? They are going to save now so that in the future they have money to spend, right? So whenever your expected future income is high, is expected to be high, right? You are going to save less today. Okay, so where your supply meets your demand, we get the real equilibrium interest rates, right? Okay, let us look at what happens when there's a government surplus. So whenever there's a government surplus, it means that the government received more tax than it used on government spending. So remember, the government receives tax and then it uses that tax to produce public goods and services, right? So whenever you have a government, a government surplus, it means that the government received more tax than it spent, meaning that there's going to be the supply of funds into the market. The government is going to be, is going to be a lender, right? The government is going to borrow banks' money. Okay. And then whenever there's a government deficit, right, it's going to cause an increase in demand, right, because people actually, um, firms are seeing that things are going to be bad, right, people, they are going to be taxed more in the future. So there's going to be a demand, an increase in demand, and there's going to be a decrease in supply. As I said, government surplus causes an increase in supply, so a government deficit is going to cause a decrease in supply. However, a government deficit has two effects, right? We have the crowding effect, and the crowding effect is that the tendency of a government deficit will raise the, in, the real interest rates and it will decrease investment, right? Okay. And then we also have Ricardo's effect, right? But I'll show you guys Ricardo's effect just now. But let us look at what risk premium is. So risk premium is the risk of a risky fund less the risk of a safer fund right don't worry about all this okay and then we look at the global market right um okay before we look at the global markets i want us to look at something there so remember this formula that um households income is going to go to savings plus consumption plus taxes remember also that gdp has three approaches it has the income approach so it's also equal to y and it has the consumption approach which is c plus i plus G plus X minus M. So you have Y here and you have Y here. So meaning that you can equate this equation. So you can say S plus C plus T is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And then what can cancel cancels off? And then you are left with S plus T is equal to I plus G plus X minus M. And then you can solve for any variable. So when they ask you for investment, you use this formula to solve for investment, you're going to, give, to be given other variables. If they ask you for savings, you can solve for savings. It's an equation. When you have one missing variable, you can solve for it using the other variables. So, yeah. Let's get into the curves. The interesting stuff now. So we've already established what supply is, right? And it said supply, the suppliers of loanable funds are actually our households and the demanders of the loanable funds are actually firms. Sorry about that, right? So where the supply and the demand means, we get the equilibrium, as I said, equilibrium real interest rates, right? 
and the equilibrium quantity of loanable funds. So in this market, you have the suppliers' households, the demand as firms, the price as your real interest rates, and your quantity as the quantity of loanable funds. The laws of demand and of supply still apply in this market. So the higher the price, the lower the demand. The lower the price, the higher the demand, right? So let us look at, okay, I'm going to come to the Ricardo effect ne? just now. I'm going to come back to it. Let me just finish the shifts. So you remember this is the initial demand and supply, and then you can actually have shifts in the supply curve and shifts in the demand curve. Let's start with the supply curve shifts. What could potentially cause reasons? I covered them just now, right? Disposable income, expected future income, wealth, default risk, and government surplus, right? So in, whenever you're given a scenario, you just need to ask yourself whether it affects demand or whether it affects supply, right? And then you make the necessary shifts. You're going to start with the original one, and then you make the shifts as necessary. Then you see whether what effect it had. For example, an outward shift, an increase in demand. This was the initial one, E1. This is the new E2, right? So what did it do? It caused a decrease in the real interest rate as well as an increase in the equilibrium quantity. So that's what you do. You establish who is what the scenario, who the scenario is affecting. Is it, is it affecting households or is it affecting firms? And then you make the shifts as necessary. Right? Let us look at the demand care shift, right? We already talked about the reasons. We said that anything that has to do with real interest rate is going to cause movements along both curves. However, for the demand curve to shift, there needs to be a change in the expected profits. So that's the only change that can be, according to the notes, but there can be other changes based on the scenario. So you just need to ask yourself, who is it affecting? Is it affecting demand or is it affecting supply? And then you draw in the paper, just draw a small demand curve. Don't try to draw it in your head. Just draw it so that you see what happens and then draw the initial equilibrium, right? And then draw the second equilibrium to see what happened. So that it helps you answer the question, right? So remember okay, the crowding effect that I talked about. What did it say? It said that a government deficit is going to cause the real interest rates to, de to increase, right? It's going to raise the real interest rates. And then what is it going to do? It's going to decrease the investment. However, the Ricardo Barrow effect states that, and Gary, the other one says that the real interest rates are going to raise and then investments are going to decrease. However, this one says that there's not going to be any effects because as much as a government deficit is going to decrease supply, right? If people see that there's a government deficit, meaning that the government needs more tax in order to cover up their government spending, then they are going to want to save more because the future is going to be uncertain. They might pay more tax in the future. So the supply is going to increase, right? And the demand is also going to increase. That means that it's going to clear off um, the impacts of the crowd. It's going to clear off the crowding effects, right? So I'm going to repeat. The crowding effect states that whenever there's a government deficit, there's going to be a raise in the real interest rate and a decrease in investment. However, the Ricardo Barrow effect actually says that, says that there's not going to be any effect because as much as a government deficit will cause a decrease in supply, when there's a government deficit, it means that the government needs more taxation, right, in order to cover up their government um, spending. So that means they will need to tax you more in the future. So because people see that they are going to have less disposable income in the future, they are going to save more today, right? And de the demand is also going to increase because firms also know that they are going to be taxed more. So they want to make profits now, right? Leaving the interest rate constant. So that's the Ricardo effect. That's the Ricardo effect, right? We talked about demand. We talked about supply. Now let's talk about... Okay, let's talk about the impact of inflation on the borrowers and the lenders. So if you think about it, what are borrowers, right? Borrowers are firms, right? But what about lenders? Lenders are households. If you think about it, is inflation good for you as a household? It's bad for you, right? And what are you? You are a lender. You are, you are the supply. So inflation is going to be bad for lenders. However, it's going to be good for borrowers. And then deflation. Is deflation good for you as a householder? Yes, it's good for you. So it's good for lenders because we are lenders in, in, the, in the market of loanable funds. And then it's going to be bad for borrowers. Okay, that's just that. And then now let's look at the global markets, right? So 
the lower markets are gonna I'm gonna try to be fast. So in the lower markets, you're gonna have this is the global markets, right? The initial one, this one. So you're gonna have your demand and your supply meeting, right? Creating an a real interest rate. Creating a real interest rate, right? Okay, and then that real interest rate, if you are part of if you are part of the global market as a country, is it's gonna be transferred exactly as it is all the way to your country, right? So let us just say that this is three percent. Do you see that in your individual country where the supply meets the demand is at a higher interest rate? Let's say five percent. So you need to ask yourself. So we're trying to establish who the who the international borrower and who the international lender is between these two graphs. So I want you to look at the law of demand and supply. What does the law of demand say? It says that the higher the price, meaning the higher the real interest rate, the lower the quantity demanded. So what is demand going to want to do? Demand is going to want to find the lowest price possible. If my, my own country is charging me an interest rate of 5%, but I can get an interest rate of 3%, where am I going to go? I'm going to go in the global market. So in this instance, you're going to be an international an international borrower. Right? So where the real interest rate touches the demand curve of the country, that is going to be the equilibrium quantity of global loanable funds for this market. And then let us look at the other one. So remember, if you are part of the market, you take the price exactly as it is. It always touches the demand curve of that country. So here it's going to be international borrower, the equilibrium um, borrowed funds, right, it's where it's touching. So this quantity that you get here is what people borrowed. And then you still touch the demand curve. Let's look at whether it's an international borrower or supplier. So what does the law of demand say? The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. Right? So you have an interest rate of 3% and you have an interest rate of 2% here. So meaning that demand is going to stay, but we're looking for the international, the one that's leaving. Right? So what does the law of supply say? The higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied. So if my market is giving me an interest rate of 2%, but the global market is giving me an interest rate of 3%, what am I going to do? I'm going to leave because I want a higher interest rate because I'm the supply. So I will be an international lender. I want to repeat this so that you guys understand. So remember, we have the global markets, and where the supply and the demand curve of the global market meets, we get the world real interest rates, right? That world real interest rate is transferred to the countries exactly as it is. So it, this, in this example, it's 3%, right? And then you find the individual country, which is this graph. It has its own demand and supply curve. And where it meets, it makes the country's real interest rate, right? In this example, the country's real interest rate is 5%, right? And then the world one is 3%. So you look at what, who this is going to affect based on the law of demand and supply, right? So if my price on my, my, on my own country is 5%, if they are charging me 5%, but the world is charging me 3%, do you think supply and demand is going to leave? Supply is going to stay because it's a higher interest rate because of the law of supply. The higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied. However, demand is going to want to leave because the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, meaning that the, the, the demand is going to look for a lower price. So you are going to be an international borrower. Let's look at the other example. You still take the real interest rate exactly as it is. But in this example, you have the country's demand and supply meeting and they form a lower interest rate, right? What is demand going to do? Demand is going to stay. It's not going to go outside because why would it pay a percentage of 3% when they can get 2% in their own country? But what is supply going to do? Supply is going to leave because they can get more returns for borrowing. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope that it helped. As I promised in the beginning of the video, I'm going to be doing a video on 10 things you need to remember before writing. So hope it helps. My teacher used to say that the best time to build a tree is 10 years ago and now. So make sure you've watched all my videos. Right? If you haven't built the, the tree of ensuring that you pass and get, you get the fruits of your work.
if you haven't built it if you haven't built that sheet 10 years ago build it now by watching my videos bye i hope you've subscribed